do you want to say right now, do you have the greatest respect? You said this about the last president. You thought it was okay. Do you have the greatest respect for Donald Trump? Senator, to reiterate, you, you do not hear... You can't even say if you have great respect for Donald Trump. You don't hear sitting judges commenting on political... I'm just commentary. asking you what you said about President Bush in, in the last time you were before right. the United States Senate. Do you have the greatest respect for Donald Trump? I appreciate the question. And what I've said uh, during this process is I need to stay away. And you don't need to report it. Three zip codes are away. You don't need to repeat again. You're not <laughs> answering my question. And I want to tell you why I'm, I'm building towards this. Because there's an issue of this president who's asking for loyalty tests from the people he's putting forward for offices. Now, you heard how he's continuing to bash the Attorney General of the United States of America mm -hmm. and, and saying that, that if he knew he was going to recuse himself, that he wouldn't have put him forward. You, you've seen this president demanding loyalty, expecting loyalty. President Trump not only said that about Jeff Sessions, but you know you've said that about other folks. And so you're not willing to say about the comment on the character of this president. You're not willing to say if you have great respect for this president. Um, just last night, you wouldn't comment on the fact that the president, uh, to one of my other colleagues, when he was talking about both sides being to blame, uh, really excusing, it seems, the behavior of neo-Nazis. And, and, and I, I'm just wondering what kind of loyalty is being required of you for this job. That, that's what I'm building to by asking you and trying to keep apples to apples. What you said about President Bush, why aren't you saying it about President Trump? And so I want to just, just build to this in, in the remaining time I have left. In, in May of 2016, then-candidate Trump put out his first list of potential Supreme Court nominees. You weren't on that list. In September 2016, he put out another longer list. You weren't on that one. Then in May 2017, something in, in, incredible happened. Robert Mueller, Mueller was appointed by the special counsel to investigate any links in coordination between the Russian government and the Trump campaign. The president was now in jeopardy, or at least his campaign was jeopardy. So he was a subject of a criminal investigation. And then President Trump puts out a third list of nominees, and your name is on that list. Now, you've heard so many of my colleagues asking about your views of the constitutionality of a president being investigated. You're failing to, to at least hold President Trump in your eyes to the same level of the presidential character, which you've talked about in speech after speech. You suddenly you're going mum as to the character of this president, given all his lies, all his remarks that have been renounced, actually criticized on both sides of the aisle. And now there is a suspicion, and, and, I, and I don't think it's a big leap to think that the public has this suspicion that somehow... You are in a position, and, and I wonder, do you credibly believe that if you agreed right now to recuse yourself, do you, do you credibly believe that somehow, like he said with Jeff Sessions, that he would not hold your nomination up if you, if you recuse yourself? Do you credibly believe that? Senator, uh, in this process, I need to uphold the independence of the judiciary in one of those. But that's what's a question right here. I mean, the, what right now there's a shadow over the independence of the judiciary because a president who has been credibly accused by his former lawyer of being an unindicted co-conspirator has the opportunity to put a judge on the bench. The only judge from that list that was added after the Mueller investigation, of all those judges, you're the only one that has spoken extensively from raising your hand at a Georgetown uh, at a, a law school event to speaking about it. I don't think it's a big leap I don't, I don't, that to, to have the common person begin to suspect that you're being put up right now, a person that can't even speak to the character of this president, won't even say what you said about George Bush, that you have the greatest respect for a president. And granted, it's hard to say about someone who brags about sexually assaulting women. It, it is understandable for people to suspect that there's something going on, that somehow this is a rigged, that you are going to get on that bench. And I hear your, your, your admonitions that you're going to be independent, but the suspicion is clearly there. And, and, and so you've written extensively about this. You've, you've spoken to the issue. You've written about the issue in law journals. Can, can you tell me why the common person, millions of Americans, wouldn't sit back and say, well, this is Donald Trump who's demanded loyalty from an FBI director, demanded loyalty from the attorney general, all the people he seems to be putting in positions of law enforcement. In fact, he criticizes 
in the most, in, as a tweet we saw right before these hearings began, criticizes very dramatically the Justice Department for doing investigations on folks, it seems because they're Republicans in the most partisan way. And, and to me, that casts a shadow over these whole processes. It's a shadow, of course, it's extended by not having your documents, it's extended by not having access to your full record. But, but can you speak to that for me, sir? Can you speak to that credible suspicion that people might have, that this system is somehow rigged and the president is putting somebody up just to protect him from a criminal investigation? Senator, three quick points. <clears throat> One, my only loyalty is to the Constitution. I've made that clear, and I'm an independent judge. Two, the J Justice Department for 45 years has taken the position and still does that a sitting president may not be indicted while still in office. Three, I have not taken a position on the constitutionality and promised you I have an open mind uh, on that question. And four, I did talk about a congressional proposal which was not enacted, and as you've heard me say for two days, I draw a distinction between what Congress does and what the Constitution requires. Uh, so just because I uh, talked about something for Congress to consider in the wake of the uh, experience with President Bush, does not mean that I think that's in the Constitution. I've made clear uh, that I have not taken a position on the constitutionality and have an open mind. So if you put those four points together, I think you should conclude that I, and read my 12 years of opinions, and read the letters, and read the teaching evaluations, and look at my whole life, I think you should conclude respectfully that I have the independence uh, required to be a good judge. And I appreciate the respect you're affording me. And I